Well, thank you so much for tuning in to our study series today entitled Understanding the Times Church in 21st Century. We thank you, Facebook audience, for tuning in and for being a part of Understanding the Times 21st Century. And indeed, we are living in a time where we really do need to understand. And also, we want to thank you so much for tuning in to Warriors for Jesus Ministry. Warriors for Jesus Ministry is a ministry that is designed not to just inform you, but to believe God to transform you by the power of the living God. I want to go right into our lesson. And we are also still talking about it. So this is our end time prophecy report as well as understanding the time. Now, America, we look at America. America is in a spiritual slide. We are going in a downward spiral. From God's blessings to occult oppression, occult bondage, uh, occult trapping, occult belief, occult worship. And it's sad to say that because it is infiltrating America as a whole, it is also coming to church. Now we were talking about in our end time prophecy report, we were in we was in Revelations chapter number nine, verse number twenty one, and we talked about the four big sins. And we know that this is doing tribulation period. If you go to our Facebook page, Jerome Johnson, and scroll down, you will see our teachings on end time prophecy report. You can get a complete understanding of where we what we are talking about, even upon today. But Revelations 9 and 21 says, Neither repented they of their sorcery, of their murderers, of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their theft. And we know that these are going to be the three major sins as we get closer and closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can see that the foundation has already been laid years ago with these four major sins, but they are moving so quick now and they're becoming so intensified. It's like a woman in birth pain waiting to deliver the baby. The birth pains, the people are groaning and they're crying out for help and they're afraid to walk the streets. That Every time we turn on the news, we're hearing about theft reports and identity theft and, and sexual immorality is, is yet on massive increase. So we understand that these are the four big sins in Revelations 9 and 21. It lists these four most prominent sins of the tribulation period. And the significance of these sins is great in light of present trends, present trends I'm sorry, in the world today. So it is not a coincidence, so it's no coincidence that the four major sins listed here are today the four most serious problems facing law enforcement. But we want to focus again on that word sorcery, nor repented they of their sorcery. Now, when we look at this word sorcery, we have to go from the approach of what sorcery is today. It's not just conjuring up spells and, and doing voodoo sessions and saying all kind of crazy words. But sorcery comes in a whole package that has been unwrapped more so in the 21st century church age and in the 21st century age that we are living in in America and to where it comes from all different directions. But this new age is filled with deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It teaches us how to empty our minds of all our thoughts and how to acquire peace from within yourself. We know that Christianity, sanctification, holiness fills us with God's Holy Spirit and it can fill your mind with the word of God um, that he can give you the peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace that Jesus said he gives, not as the world give it. God's peace is far more greater. Now, when we're dealing with sorceries, we are dealing with paganism. We're dealing with paganism. We are dealing with religious connection. We're not just dealing with paganism from the aspect of Revelations 9 and 20 when they talk about their idols and their, and, their, and their wood and their stones and things that people worship. We're not talking about just paganism from the form of worship idols, but paganism and sorcery are linked together because they both deal with the, the belief system, uh, which, is, which is spiritual and which is religious. And it also deals with not just nature, but it deals with many gods and goddesses. 
this. And this is where we add in understanding the times in the 21st century church. The movement of today, the order of today, is to bring everyone into this paganistic system, this system that goes beyond just paganism that they call Christmas and Easter and St. Patrick's Day, those those little holiday uh, aspects of paganism. But we're talking about paganism from the perspective of a belief system, a culture, and a lifestyle that believes that nature and earth and trees and, 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 and all of these other things are God and your God and their God. And it's a one world globalism. It's a new world order that has moved all the way from the beginning of time into our time, but never have we had a pope that mandate that all religions can support each other and come together and be as one because we all serve the same God. So now we see the Pope's new world order and we see it being promoted more and more and more where he's bringing all of the different faiths together so that they can unify as one and accept that there is not just one way to God, but there are many ways to God. So you see that sorcery, that paganism, that coexist, that one world uh, religion is a system that is constantly sweeping through the land and it has found its way into the church compromising and the church letting um, all different types of teachings and beliefs come into the pulpit and teach the people of God in ways that God has forbidden for us to be taught. Let's look at this quick clipping right quick there. We want to give you some proof on how this governmental system is trying to bring about this antichrist system, this one world global system, this one world religious system, this one world ecumenical system. Let's look at the reality of this in this short video. I'm going to show you two short videos, which this one might be about five minutes and the last one might be about six minutes. But we want to bring some circumstantial proof to you that we're not just teaching you something out of assumption. It's really happening that way to Today. We will proceed with the signing ceremony of the Unity of Religion Agreement. The Unity of Religion Agreement is a groundbreaking promise of religions to unite condition unconditionally and without discrimination to achieve true peace. I would like to call upon the following religious leaders to come up to the stage and join us for the signing of the ceremony of the Unity of Religions Agreement. First, Archbishop Martin de Jesus Barahona to please come up to the stage. Also, a representative of Holiness Sharukirti Panditak Hariavari Aswam Swati Sri Bataraka to come to the stage. Also, from the Islam Shia faith, El Sharif Muhammad Hassan El Armini to come to the stage. From the Hinduism faith, His Holiness Swami Shidadanda Saraswati Ji Maharaj, the Guru of India. From the faith of Buddhism, Representative Dr. Ashin Nyani Sara. Founder of the Sitaku Buddha Vihara. Would you please make your way to the stage? From the Catholic Church, Archbishop Antonio Ledesma from the Philippines. From the Anglican Church, Archbishop Patricio Inlique Viveros Robles. From the Sikh religion, Singh Sahib Jana Gurbacha and Singhji, if you could make your way, make your way to the stage, please. From the Jewish faith, Rabbi Jeremy Yehuda Milgrom. From the Zoroaster faith, Dr. Meher Master Moose. And from the Baha'i faith, Dr. Bharati Gandhi. Uh, while the proceedings continue on stage, uh, we will conduct the signing ceremony of the agreement to propose the enactment of an international law for the cessation of war and world peace just below stage with our delegations and to establish peace for the heritage of peace to be brought to all generations. We must do everything in our power to end all wars on this earth 
and to establish world peace according to the will of the Creator, God. Therefore, all religions must unite under God as one. We pledge in sight of God, all people of the world, and the peace advocate to become under God through the unity of religion. We hereby acknowledge that we must be recreated through God's seed so that we might be recognized as the family of God and in that likeness shine an eternal light upon the earth loving our neighbors as ourselves. We recognize our need for repentance as well as our need to show grace to all the people of the world. Grace which can be seen in the light rain and the air of heaven and through that grace lead humanity to salvation from death we hereby pledge with all reasonable endeavor to take on this duty to establish peace and end all wars on this earth and as a united religion to leave a war world at peace as a legacy for our future generations to come considering the grace that we have received we are moved to fully carry our filial duty to our Father. That is, to do whatever we can to make this world one over which God can reign. This we recognize as a task appointed to this generation. We recognize that when religious religions become united, wars will end and peace will become to the world. This has been the will of God and the purpose of religion for the past 6,000 years. Therefore, I hereby sign this agreement in sight of God, all people of the world, and peace advocates. So you see the times that we are living in. We are indeed living in a very crucial time where understanding the times in the 21st century church and understanding the times in America with the generation now and the generation to come, there are going to be a lot of false messiahs. There's going to be, Jesus said, if any man preach not this gospel, let him be a curse. You know, if you don't preach this Jesus, the one and only true absolute Jesus, then God is going to judge you. But the whole point of showing you that clipping is to get you to see just how this world is being set up, just how this antichrist system is being set up, just how this unifying all religions together is being more than just one way to God, just one word, religious system, religious system is being set up so that now the generation now and the generations to come, they are not going to be locked in on accepting Jesus as the only way. That's why we have to stand strong and solid upon our faith through living it and through the declaring it in the midst of all of this unification that's taking place because it's a oneness that's being developed just like the Babylonian system, but it's not the oneness that God is calling for. The oneness that God is calling for is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Our oneness is in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Lord thy God is one. He is the only holy and supreme God that we are to worship and we are to serve. So paganism, like I said, is on the move. Sorcery is on the move. And it's about earth. It's about trees. It's about uh, within you, the powers within you. It's about the the, the, the white magic of, uh, of the new age belief system that you can serve all these different spirits and you can tap into all these different spirits. And yet you are still pleasing the same God. It is a lie. Where religion is indeed at hand. Now, the purpose of this quick Facebook Live is to show you why we're seeing so much confusion, why we are seeing so many things that are going the opposite way of how they're supposed to go according to the Word of God, because everything is falling into place, just like the Scripture said. Producing spirits and doctrines of devils, another Jesus, another gospel, all of what's falling into place is because God's word is the only true and living word that can fulfill what you see happening even today. And God told his people, when we say understand the times in the 21st century church, what's being designed today is not just to keep the people in darkness that's in darkness, but it's to infiltrate the believers. It's to captivate us into this belief system of believing that we can actually serve all these other gods and be pleasing to the one and only true God. And God tells us just in one scripture out of many, this one is very powerful. Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verses 9 through 14, you can find out about the forbidden practices. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, Warriors for Jesus, and look at our teaching on forbidden practices. 
So God told them, don't practice these things. Don't do these things. They are forbidden. And it's called syncretism, blending a, a, a different religions and beliefs and philosophies and practices into something new. In other words, taking what you once believed in is the only way and blending and mixing these new things in. Just like again, Satan said to Eve, you won't surely die. You will be as God. He wanted them to see that there was more to what God forbid them not to do, which was not to eat from the tree of good and evil. It was more than just that restriction. There's a whole lot more that you can see, doors that you can open. But I am here to tell you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you are finding yourself mixing in all these other practices and beliefs, shut those doors now. And if you have been uh, born into this belief system, if you are trapped into this system of darkness, God can deliver you through genuine repentance and surrendering and obeying his holy word. Oh, that's basically what happened with Israel. And that's why we're teaching it with the title, Understand the Times in the 21st Century Church, because the people of God, we cannot afford to mix in with other practices, with other beliefs that God forbids, because it is, once again, a recipe for disaster. So now we see what's happening. Christian yoga. I mentioned this before, and I'm just about closing for the day. There ain't no such thing. East is east and west is west. And if Christians is to remain Christians, the twine should never be married. So Christians in yoga. Well, let's look at this video clipping and see how uh, God's word really tells us and why it warns us to be careful what we practice and what we allow to become a part of our lifestyle and we begin to not realize what we are really introducing into our whole and it eventually leads to the realm of the spiritual, to meditation, where the person looks into himself to find the true self, and in finding the true self, he believes he's finding God. You know, the frightening thing to me now, as I look back, is I started having experience, the experience that I was God. And as God, I could completely structure my life in my universe exactly the way I wanted it. The breathing exercises are designed to teach you to absorb the prana, the energy life force in the cosmos, to channel it into the chakras, the uh, psychic channels, thus awakening the Shakti force, the Kundalini force, and bringing about those psychic powers, which are such an integral and prevalent part in yoga. So very slowly, let's breathe in through our nose, very slowly, breathe in. Breathe out. There are many dangers in the breathing techniques. Even the writers and the proponents of these exercises are quick to warn that not only do these things trigger emotional and mental diseases, which have been known to place people even in insane asylums for the rest of their lives, but they also recognize that these exercises can open your soul and your mind and your entire being to a takeover by demonic forces. Many people don't realize this, but it's terribly dangerous to go into a meditative state in which the mind is simply left blank. And that ultimately is the purpose of the meditations in yoga. It's like opening the door to a room. Whatever comes through, you have no control over. Many argue that certain yoga techniques can be used as merely exercise Yet that is not yoga's intention. It can be compared to joining the military. While a soldier may get stronger and more vigorous, the purpose of the army is certainly not health care. The aim is to learn how to kill. And so it is with yoga. All yogic exercise was designed to kill the will, mind and emotions, hence releasing the soul from the endless cycle of reincarnation. I thought I was being strengthened but what I was really doing is flipping into an altered state of consciousness, a form of self-hypnosis, which is very weakening to the mind and to the body. But this weakness made me afraid to give it up. The biggest danger I found in, in practicing transcendental meditation was the dependency on the technique itself. It's kind of like drugs. A, a, a drug addict doesn't want to give up his drugs and because the experience is so pleasing and he feels his life will crumble around him if he doesn't have it. I thought I'd have the experience of 
like leaving Shangri-La and all of a sudden turning old and weak and disintegrating. I was afraid that I would lose my, my clarity and my energy. But little did I know, when I did give it up, I gained all these things that I never had when I meditated. So you see, there's the proof right there that we have to understand as believers, we are to abstain from all appearance. We have to understand as believers that we have to represent Jesus in light of how everything in this world is trying to bring us into the forming us to the pattern of everyone else. We have to be able, like the scripture says, for the believers to prove all things. So we're trying to bring you some facts with, without just teaching you um, what we know that God has revealed to us. And as we pray, we ask God to give us the proof to show you. And then it's up to you, believers, to, to redefine what you're doing or to repent for it and get back to where you once was with the Lord. And for those of you that are demonic oppressed, and those of you that are involved in this paganism, that is involved in sorcery, that's involved in all of this, this Eastern mystical uh, spirits that have circulated into America and circulated into your homes, you have a chance as well to surrender and turn your life over to Jesus because he can deliver you. So there, as we said before in our end time prophecy report, yoga for all, it's a body-based spirituality. Gave you our testimony as well, a testimony when we was in the martial arts and we was a black tiger. Yoga, Tai Chi, chanting, all of these things, altered consciousness, hypnosis, meditation. If you go to our YouTube channel, Words for Jesus, we have a lot of teachings on there, even showing you how they have brought this into the school system, into the colleges, and people have brought it into But once again, yoga means union. It is connected to the English word yoke. Yoga is a journey of self through self to self. The Prahagabhag Gita teaches that it is designed to empty the mind. And yoga means with God, with Brahma, or union with the little ego else, with the little ego self, with divine self, in the spirit. Yoga is primarily spiritual discipline. So we just wanted to briefly be able to uh, introduce you to what we were talking about in regards to understanding the deception that is in the land. We need to understand that God is always in control and he's always there waiting to help those that want to. So we just did a quick teaching on understanding the times in the 21st century church. And the point was to give you some proof give you some insight, to give you some understanding, because the scripture says, I believe it was the words of Solomon, and all thy getting, get an understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. We want to make sure that we be ready to give an answer to every man, asking us according to our faith, why we believe in the absolute one God, one God only, the creator of all mankind. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh, his name is Jesus. He is the King of Kings and lord of lords we thank you so much for tuning in facebook live and we're going to ask you to continue to pray for us as we continue to obey god and give you the revelations that god give us praying that it would transform your life father in the name of jesus lord we have obeyed you obeyed you in this brief video teaching this facebook live teaching and lord we ask that you would look up on the listening and viewing audience lord god and help them to oh god cry out to you for deliverance and oh god cry out to you for repentance most of all to ask you to change their lives help them to read your word oh god help them to read oh god the starting of the church in the book of acts lord god and receive your plan of salvation as it has been written oh god for our learning and for us to follow we ask that you continue to lead and guide us, oh God, throughout this day. And bless this listening, viewing audience, Lord God, the parents, the children, oh God, the households as a whole. Look upon the fathers that they will repent and surrender their life to you, that they may destroy the powers of darkness in their home, and that they will become a sanctified, holy servant of the Lord Jesus. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for tuning in to Warriors for Jesus Ministry Facebook Live, and we hope to see you soon.